Hello, 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 trans surfer and the trans surfing curious. My name is Renee Garcia, guys, and this is Trans Surfing TV. And today on Trans Surfing TV, I'm going to be diving in to the two topics covered in the new book, A Tale of Practical Reality Trans Surfing by me and Lucy Coltrera. This is a two for one combo, a one two punch, if you will, the soul frail and the mere world. And sorry if I'm just like a little bit nervous right now. It's been a long time since I've been in front of the camera. A lot has happened and I will get into that in a moment. But um, yes, I really feel <laughs> as though life is fucking dreamlike for me right now. I mean, it really is. And editing this book that I wrote last year, living the reality that I am, going with the alternatives flow, continuing to dial to the frail of my soul, which really is the, the main key to unlocking the mirror, and doing this chapter all at the same time, it's a bizarre experience. I'm, I'm just gonna call it what it is. I, I feel as though, and I've talked about this a little bit in the Facebook group recently, that my reality is sort of transurfing me at this point. And I don't mean that in a negative way. It's f far from negative, but I believe that, you know, when we, and again, I'm gonna get into all of this in this in this video, but I believe when we are tuned away from our soul frail, which is tuned into pendulums, tuned into the external environment in an unhealthy way that gets the mirror image responding back to you with something you don't wanna see, this is sort of reality kinda of like having its way with you extracting your energetic resources for its own intentions and you kind of just getting tossed about by the waves. I see this happening to so many people right now and I really feel that now more than ever, really embracing this concept, trying to understand what it is that I'm talking about today and getting yourself into a position where pendulums aren't chewing your fucking face off. It's so like, and then, and then going in the opposite direct, direction and tuning to the frail of your soul. This is getting away from that mode of just getting, you know, tossed around by the waves in your reality. And your reality sort of picks you up the alternatives flow, right? It's really what the alternatives flow, how the alternatives flow is accomplished is when you tune to the frail of your soul and you really, really get your pendulums in check, your reality just kind of picks you up and takes you along and things truly do become much more effortless and easy and things are happening in my life right now that I can like, I can hardly believe, especially when I'm looking back on my story, doing the editing with Lucy Coltrera and thinking to myself, like, holy fuck, how have I come this far? How did I come from such an unhealthy state of being, an unhealthy reality? Again, pendulums ripping me apart. I was miserable, I was empty, I was toxic, I was a bitch. I was just, you know, I was not me. I was not me. And this concept and what I'm gonna talk about today and more valuably the chapters in the, um, the, the newest release, we're gonna do two at once, chapter five, which is the mirror world and chapter six, which is the soul frail. You can get the link below for those if you're so inclined. But this is the pivot point 
of my experience and I know like I, I've been getting pretty emotional on these videos because this, this and, I, and this is not going to be an exception. <laughs> this has been a very profound experience for me. I'm not take, taking any of this for granted. My experience with reality transurfing is still unfolding in a way that is mind-blowing that uh, I look back and I put myself in the place that I was so I could write this book and I'm just absolutely mesmerized by what these concepts have helped me to materialize it's um, it rattles me it absolutely rattles me because I feel so unbelievably blessed. I mean, there are times in my life where I absolutely shudder to think what would have happened to me had I not found reality transurfing. So in this video today, the soul frail and the mirror world, I'm going to run through how they correspond, um, where I was and where I am now, and how these two concepts are really the catalyst for this transformation how I got here and what I refer to as the reality hole and then getting yourself up out of that hole and building your new structure via these two concepts. Um, what I see with people being misaligned right now, and there's a lot of it, there is a way out, but it is going to come with some choices, some, some challenging choices for some, and it may cost you something in return. It's definitely cost me certain things in my reality, but again, I, I know what it is I'm giving up and what I'm gaining in the process. Um, I'm going to talk quickly about the book experience and then how to get radical if that is what you are ready for. So again, chapters five and six out now. It is a one-two combo. They're both $12, so $12 for both, not each. The link's below, and of course it comes with homework, a live Zoom call with me for a Q&A, and then support in the Facebook group, and a new glossary. And it's super powerful, and you can get all the details below. So the soul frail and the mirror world and how they correspond to each other. So, <laughs> I mean, this is where I'm humbled beyond anything I could have imagined for myself. I would never in my past, now I'm 10 years out from this experience, but I could never in my wildest dreams back then imagine myself being humbled the way that I was and that I still am, switching boats, <laughs> jumping life tracks, getting myself away from an empty shell of a human being version of me that, you know, was just wrought with insecurities and um, doubt and anger and confusion and addiction and longing for love, longing for safety. I mean, I was an extraordinary mess. And when I say extraordinary mess, like I don't even know, I don't even know how to say it any, any other way. I, I hated myself. I hated my reality. I hated my past. I was completely fearful and <laughs> like, the future was not a pleasant thought for me. I was lost at sea. I was truly lost at sea. And I talk about this in the book. It's, and it's so clarifying being able to look back on this experience retrospectively. Now with my new trans-surfing philosophy and 
see the situation for what it truly was. And the bottom line of it is, or was, that I was in the wrong version of reality for me. I was in the wrong version of reality for me. I was in the wrong external environment. I was with the wrong people. I was doing the wrong things. I was completely tuned out of my frail. So for those of you that aren't familiar with this concept, your soul frail is essentially the, the, the truest version of you. It's the intricate little, little code, little system internally that makes you an individual. And what happens is when we're born, we are this version of us. We are tuned to the frail of our soul. And slowly, our world and the people in our environment begin to program us and overlay attitudes, beliefs, thoughts, systems, all sorts of different programming that tunes us away from that true version of ourselves. Now this is what happened to me and it happened to me in a massive way because the weaker you are, the easier it is for the pendulums in your life to manipulate you. And I was very, very weak. I mean, I grew up in poverty. I grew up in a, a, an abusive, a very abusive environment, both physically and psychologically, intellectually. I wasn't nurtured. I wasn't um, given tools to try to navigate this world or any tools for self-esteem, anything like that. So I was one of these characters that was just endlessly looking to reality to do a number of things for me, take the pain away. This is where drugs and alcohol and, you know, um, allowing myself to be abused sexually or abusing myself, using my sexuality. Um, this is where, you know, I really sought out external, <laughs> external numbing devices really, and also looked for ways in which I could feel good about myself, but these were all very unhealthy mechanisms that I was reaching for. And this is like fucking music to the pendulum's ears, you know? You got someone young, impressionable, vulnerable, easy, easily manipulated and willing to pretty much just do whatever just for a moment of pain-free living. So the pendulums descended on me and ripped me apart and convinced me of a number of things that I now believe to be untrue, things about myself, things about reality, things about how the world functions, things about how I need to operate within my world to get what it is that I need to get so I can feel whole, you know, <laughs> something. It was, it, I was just constantly seeking out something via pendulums that would give me some sort of result and I did get some results, but the things that those results cost me um, sent me crashing down in a fucking epic way, like crash and burn like a motherfucker. So I crash and burn like a motherfucker, right? I've got a thriving business, a super rich boyfriend that was the most toxic relationship you could ever imagine. I've got all of the accoutrements of, you know, I lived in Los Angeles at the time. Everything that that pendulum convinced me that I should have, I had. And then it all fell apart because none of it was gained in any sort of meaningful way. Again, I was an empty shell of a human being and I, I was just, I was dialed to the frail 
of the system, Los Angeles, the pendulums at be there, all that junk. So my soul frail, I got tuned out and out and out and out and tuned towards the pendulums more and more and more and more. And this led to my absolute breaking point in life, like bottomed out, crash and burn, level fucking one, suicidal. I went into it in the last chapter, which was an absolute doozy to write. And I know it was a lot um, for a lot of people to read and listen to because it, 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 it's intense. The story is intense. And that's what happened to me. I ended up on level one or level zero. I didn't want to live anymore. Um, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted. There was no softness in my life. There was no, there was no care for my world. And more valuably, there was zero care for myself. I had no self-love. I absolutely hated who I was as a person. And that shit broke me. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> That shit broke me. And this is before I found transurfing. I didn't know what to do. I found transurfing shortly after this. And like a miracle, I, you know, <laughs> I realized that I was being handed exactly the thing that was going to help me transform away from this monster version of me. So I break. I don't know what to do. I get admitted to a psychiatric hospital because I just don't want to live anymore. I'm having an epic nervous breakdown. And I decide that I'm going to remove myself from my reality. I'm going to remove myself from my environment, rather, the reality, the life track that I was living. And this is when it happened. <laughs> this is exactly when the transition occurred. and. I began, after finding Reality Transurfing and really diving in to the concepts 100%, I began tuning to the frail of my soul for the first time in my life. And what this has done for me, seven years after this experience, I can honestly say that I feel like a whole person today. I feel like a whole person. I feel like a true version of myself. I'm balanced. I'm happy when things don't go in the exact direction that I expected them to. I trust my world. I take care of myself. I love myself. I don't allow people to abuse me anymore. I don't abuse myself. I listen to my heart, my mind, the volume on my mind, and that connection to the pendulums that were once ripping me to shreds. It's been turned down and severed, you know? And this is exactly how it transpired. I tuned to the frail of my soul and my world started showing me a different image. It started to show me a version of reality that I actually want to be a part of. And that I feel effective in and that I love. And <clears throat> my reality now is rewarding me for this work that I've done. The more I've tuned to the frail of my soul, the more the mirror responds to me with an image that I want to see. I'm in love. I'm getting ready to embark on an epic adventure that I would never have dreamed was an option available for me. I just bought 
a beautiful new house in an Eastern European country in a city that I've fallen in love with. And next week I'm going there. I've got a one-way ticket. <laughs> and I'm going to furnish the place and get it ready for some high quality life. And I'm financially abundant. I'm balanced. Last night I slept like a motherfucker, man. I slept eight and a half hours straight and I didn't wake up. No drugs, no anxiety, just good, solid sleep. I'm creative. My energy levels are high and I'm enjoying my experience of life. Now from seven years ago, it's a very, very different story, right? So this is how the mere world and the soul frail correspond. The more you tune out of the pendulums in your life, the more you tune in to the frail of your soul, the better the image becomes in the world mirror. The more you're tuned into the pendulums, the more you're running on the intentions the pendulums want for you, you are really just living a reality that the pendulums have chosen for you. Like Deepak Chopra says, and I love it, create your own reality or one will be created for you. And isn't that the fucking truth? So that's where I am now and where I was, what happened to me, what type of person I was, what I experienced that woke me up and sort of shook me. Thank God I had a moment where my reality just grabbed me and started just shaking me like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I had some insights and some opportunities to, to, to break free and that's what I did. And the story that I tell in the book is really just about that, breaking free, embarking on, getting connected to myself, getting connected to my reality in a meaningful way, the, 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 the journey of a spiritual human being. And I took it, right? I took it. I didn't run away. I didn't fucking, you know, make excuses. I didn't uh, turn a blind eye. I walked into that shit and I did it. And this is now, seven years later, what has resulted in, you know, in those, uh, those initial steps, how they've resulted. So what I wanna talk about quickly here is the reality transurfing concepts as a whole because right at this moment the soul frail and the mirror world these are if you look at the knowledge in a linear fashion starting at the alternative space pendulums the induced transition the wave of fortune these are kind of concepts that are in the beginning of the knowledge these are the concepts that essentially help you come out of the whole, right? The alternative space helps us to connect with and understand that there are different ver versions of reality that are available to us. It helps us to understand that we simply get what we choose. There's an infinite number of choices and your current experience of reality is simply cause and effect from past choices and current choices that you're making right now. So the alternative space is kind of like this vast grid or matrix of knowledge that we connect with in the beginning of this knowledge, in the beginning of you know, our transurfing experience. We have to connect with this concept because without doing so, there's really nowhere to go. You can't, you can't transurf yourself to a version of reality that you don't acknowledge exists, and you're simply not going to go there if you feel as though your static version of reality right now is the only option available to you, or you are viewing your reality as static. So the alternative space, crucial. Then getting pendulums off you, right? Because without the energetic reserves that pendulums typically get, without you taking Taking that stuff back for yourself, you're not going to have the energy to do what it is that I'm, what it is that I'm suggesting, and what it is I've done for myself. The wave of fortune and the induced transition are really the same thing. Just one's going up to higher levels of reality, and one's spiraling down. You get what you focus on. Your choice 
is, is, is materialized, comes to fruition. So whatever you have right now is simply a materialization of a past choice that you have made. So once you take all of this knowledge and you use these concepts, if you're in a hole, right? If you're down at level one or level zero, like I was suicidal in a hospital, if you're down there, these concepts are going to help you come out of the hole to ground level. Now, what you're looking to do is lay new foundation down on that even ground up out of that hole and build a new structure in your life, which is going to be your new version of reality. How you build this structure. These are the tools that are given in the second part of the knowledge, which is where we will go from here in a tale of practical reality transurfing. I'm going to tell you exactly how I did it, but how you begin to understand what it is you even need to build in the first place is achieved by you dialing to the frail of your soul. This image of you, this perfect image of you, and I don't mean perfect like you're a perfect person, with your flaws and everything, all your stuff, all your, your idiosyncrasies, everything that you perceive to be some shortcoming, embracing all of it, who you are as an individual, and really going in deep to what it is you love, what you're capable of, what's in line with your skill set, or what your skill set is, who you are as a distinct individual. Once you venture in to this internal landscape that makes up your soul frail, you have the ability to see what it is you want to build exactly. And that structure that you build, that, that new foundation you lay, and all of the things that you go about creating that show an image to your mirror. This is what achieves everything that you want in your reality. The cool thing is about my current experience of reality right now compared to where I was in the past is that I don't want anything right now. And the prior version of me, the older, lower version of me, the desperate version of me, the unhappy version of me, scared, confused, all that stuff, all I did was want. All I did was want. I didn't do anything else. I did not do anything else. There was no other there was no other sensation that I experienced than a deep, desperate pit of desire and want. I wanted people to love me. I wanted someone to love me. I wanted to be wealthy. I wanted to be safe. I wanted to be respected. I wanted to be this. I wanted to be that. And I beat my hands on my fucking layer of the world and I demanded that my world show me this thing. I wanted to see it all, right? And what I got as a product of that was my world <laughs> showing me all the ways in which I would never have it. And it was fucking hell. It was living hell. And this is I'm sure going to speak to anyone that has climbed up out of poverty and attempted to influence their reality and make themselves a little bit of wealth in this world via inner intention and will and ego and all the junk that gets a really nasty message image being shot back at you via the mirror. I'm sure some of you are going to know exactly what it is that I am talking about. I was, you know, poverty mentality, lack mentality. 
um, what's in it for me mentality. I was a disaster. Now, I've got all the things that I want. I don't want for anything. I've got it all. But how I got it was the exact opposite of what I believe to be the case. I thought that I had to manipulate myself, mold myself, adhere to standards set by pendulums, do what my reality was telling me to do, listen to people. I had a memory the other day that actually made me tear up when I was driving. I remember when I was living in Los Angeles and I was with my, my boyfriend at the time, the much older individual that is very wealthy, and I just, I stuffed myself into a box for him and became somebody I absolutely wasn't. And I remember I saw something online about a bus going around Los Angeles, it needed volunteers for people that um, would come and volunteer and teach kids in certain neighborhoods how to read by reading to them. And I remember thinking, oh, I could do that. That would be really great. I love reading. I would love to story tell to children. I expressed this idea to my partner who immediately shot it down. He said, oh, you're gonna be in a bus with a bunch of kids um, from poor neighborhoods and they're all probably gonna be sick and you'll come home sick and you'll get me sick and blah, blah, blah. And I shut it down. And this was a common occurrence in my life, shutting down these parts of me, again, tuning away from my frail and tuning into what the pendulum actually wanted for me instead of what I actually wanted for me. And I had this memory the other day and I was like, God damn, you really did just slowly close all the doors off of who you who you were and what was going to help you to feel like life had meaning. I don't experience that anymore. I am, I am, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm expressing myself in every single way that I want to. And I know that rubs some of the pendulums the wrong way in my reality. I get haters comments on here. My, and I'll get into this in a moment. My family doesn't like what I do. My dad came and visited me a couple of months ago and it was almost like transurfing was a was a was a was a bad word, you know? And you are going to rub pendulums in your reality the wrong way once you start dialing to the frail of your soul because your, your reality wants that of you. Your reality wants you to be a fucking puppet. Your reality wants you to facilitate what it wants. It definitely doesn't want you to be an individual thriving on your own, doing your own thing, defying standards, and just, you know, living your own life. There, there's going to be pushback. There's absolutely going to be pushback. And I never have to live that previous way again, listening to somebody else tell me why I shouldn't dial to the frail of my soul. And I'm a whole person. I do what I want. I say what I want. I live how I want. I make my own choices. The house that I just bought in Tbilisi, Georgia, my partner didn't want me to do it. You know, I came back, I spent a week there. I'd never been there before. But when I was there, something happened to me. There was soul there. I could feel it. I could see it. I could see the people were lovers of life. The way they ate and the way that they engaged and the happiness on the people's faces, that layer of reality was for me and I saw it. And it didn't take me a lot of time. My partner, when I got back, he said, you only went there for a week. I said, listen, if you try to tell me to not trust myself and not trust what I s saw and felt there, like that's not gonna bode well for you long term. I trust myself. I trust my sensations. I know when I see something that is for my frail, I can feel it now, a deep inner frequency that corresponds to an ideal life track that's intended for me. And I am willing, and this is where the rubber meets the road, I am willing to listen 
and anyone that gets in my way or anyone that goes about telling me all the reasons that I shouldn't do something or I shouldn't act or I shouldn't think that way or I shouldn't, you know, make that move or whatever. I'm not in a position to listen anymore. I am a sovereign reality creating being that has dialed to the frail of my soul. And that is all that I need. That is all that I need. I do not need the opinions of others anymore. And this is the freedom that this concept allows an individual that is willing to detach. It's just like Neo in the Matrix when he's pulling those tubes off of him and he's waking up. That was my pivot point. I pulled those tubes off and I came out of that fucking gel liquid <laughs> and I took my first breath and I started to dial to the frail of my soul. And I'm not stopping that for anyone. I'm not stopping that for anyone. And the people in my life, they know that, right? They know that. So if you have not opted in to the previous chapters, these are the chapters that teach you how to come up out of that liquid and start pulling the tubes off. After this, the soul frail in the mirror world, the pivot point, this is, this is the set of tools that's going to help you accomplish rebuilding your reality, right? Because you kind of just destroyed it. <laughs> so um, what I see right now, here's something really cool that I've experienced as a transurfer and as somebody bringing this knowledge to the world. I have tapped into um, a very distinct ability to see a person if they are tuned to the frail of their soul, majorly tuned away from the frail of their soul, partially tuned, what parts are tuned, what parts are out of tune or misaligned. I can talk to a person and sometimes it doesn't even need to be in person. This is, can be over um, a text. I can talk and I can gain a sense of of all, all of this, if they're tuned, if they're not tuned, or where the imbalance is. I see oh, so many people right now tuned away from the soul frail, tuned away from the frail of their soul, and tuned into the pendulums. And our reality, especially if you live here in the United States right now, which I, I for the f first time really, have started to view the US as being highly unstable, highly unstable. So what happens when a country or the world or even just your external environment becomes unstable, pendulums start to swing. So pendulums are swinging through your reality and these frequencies are being picked up by the people that they need to get the swing going higher, right? So it's kind of like you get um, unknowingly hooked by the pendulum swinging by and it takes you for a ride. And that ride is away from the frail of your soul. So. In times of instability, political instability, environmental instability, economic instability, um, instability with you know your family situation or professional instability, financial, I think I already mentioned that one, but you get my point. These pendulums start swinging more, more violently. They put louder calls out to the external environment and there you have it, you get tuned into the pendulum and away from the frail of your soul. So this is what I see right now. I see people panicked, worried, they've got anxiety, um, they don't know what's coming next, depressed, just trying to survive. Um, you know, a, a bunch of environmental noise and feedback and negative frequencies tuning people away. It's as easy as that. So. I'm seeing people tuned out, yet what they're trying to do is manage the symptoms of what being tuned out creates. 
So being tuned away from the frail of your soul creates a plethora of negative symptoms. My story talks about all the ones that I experienced and some of the ones that I gave here as an example. Being empty, being a shell of a human, being angry, being doubting and poverty mentality and um, working myself to death and hating life and hating myself and all these things. These are the symptoms that being tuned away from the frail has created. People are attempting to alleviate the symptoms. I don't see people attempting to actually make profound and meaningful shifts in their reality so they can get the pendulums off them and start taking a breath and getting in to what it is your soul frail wants. This is the solution, not alleviation of the symptoms. So what do you do? <laughs> what do you do if this is you? It's like, I know a lot of people have messaged me in the past. They're like, God, it sounds great, but what do I do? I've got kids, I'm married, I've got a nine to five job, I've got sick parents, I've got blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Everybody's got it. I, I had it. I had to detach from some epic family pendulums that r really did not want to let me go. I had to detach from a bunch of structure that I had created for myself professionally, convincing myself that there was only one way in the world for me to make money, you know? And I had to do this thing as hard as I could and never give up and never stop. And it didn't matter if it almost killed me, I still had to do it. And I rocked all this shit. I rocked all this shit. I finally realized that the pendulums do in fact attempt to convince you that there is no other way because the, the more quickly and effectively they can convince you that there's no other way, you sever those ties from the frail of your soul and you buy their bullshit hook, line and sinker and you don't even ask any more questions. The first thing that you've got to do, if this is you, to whatever degree, if it's a massive degree, if you're in a nervous breakdown, level one, all the stuff that I talk about in my induced transition chapter and the beginning of chapter five, if this is you, you are going to have to start asking yourself some very broad and very meaningful questions. Who are you? Who are you? Who? am I? When I left Los Angeles and I moved, and I talk about this in detail in the book, and I moved to Oregon, I had a pretty easy time. I bought an Airstream. I was living on my grandparents' property. My overhead was low. I had no debt. My business was pretty automatic at that point. I didn't have to do much to have a decent amount of cash flow coming in that could, you know, cover my expenses. And I was like, oh my God, I'm out of the rat race. I can, I can breathe. Um, I don't have to worry as much. And I sort of basked in this, um, you know, this feeling of coasting for a little bit. But one morning I got into the shower and I got out, wiped the fog away on the mirror and I looked into the mirror and I saw my face in a different way for like the very first time. It was a very strange experience. My face looked different. I was almost, it was almost like I was seeing myself from another set of eyes. And I asked myself, who are you? Who are you? And what are you doing? Are you going to throw this away? Are you going to throw away your chance at meaning, at living a life that you're proud of, being someone you can be proud of, living in a way that you feel as though at the end of it all, you're going to be satisfied. And at that moment, the answer was no. <laughs> I didn't know who I was. 
All of the, that stuff that I just said, the answer was no, I wasn't gonna feel any of that shit. And I decided at that point, that was my pivot point, standing in front of the mirror, I saw myself tuned out of the frail of my soul and I decided to tune it at that very moment and that is where that's where all of this has kicked off so if you are out of alignment if you're not feeling as though you are you your life has meaning you are maximizing your skill set, who you are as a person, what you can bring to this world. If you are not feeling that right now, are you okay with that? Is that okay for you? If it's okay for you, then it's okay. But if it's not, what are you willing to do to get yourself there? I have so many that message me, I don't know what to do. I don't know how, I don't know the next step to take. I don't know what, you know, I'm, I'm confused. I don't know what moves to make. Fucking figure it out. I wasn't given all the things to do all this and I'm doing it because I got in there and I figured it out. Was it instant? Fuck no, but the mirror does not respond on our time frame, and you're not going to dial to the soul of your frail soul, your soul frail, instantly. This is some real, lifelong, powerful, long-lasting stuff. Are you going to start the journey now? So what it'll cost you and what you'll get in return. Man, it's cost me so much. It's cost me all my friends. It's cost me um, having uh, ha having an environment where I could do business easily and make lots and lots and lots of money. I had to give that up because it was going to kill me, <laughs> right? It was going to kill me. Um, it cost me my family. It cost me my family. It cost me my relationship with my mom. It cost me my relationship with my sister. It cost me my relationship with the three people in my life that I have cared more about than anyone ever, my three nieces, my sister's kids, I don't get to see them anymore because I had to detach. And there's, unfortunately, when you detach and you go, on your adventure, on your journey, you tune to the frail of your soul, and this corresponds to a life track that pulls you away from life tracks no longer intended for you, sometimes you gotta leave some things behind. I mean, it's really, it, it's, I'd like to say that doing all this stuff and living this way and, uh, creating this new reality is a hundred percent without a hitch but it's not i've experienced loss i've had to cut things out i've had to say goodbye it's painful some of it but is it worth it yes it's worth it and i know that there's going to be a day when one of my nieces calls me you know and i get to tell them the story of why i haven't been around and what I've had to do to get myself healthy, get myself loving myself, get myself to a place where I don't feel like ending it all every day and cutting out certain family members. It was the only way, you know, it was the only way at that time. Now, things can change, right? I have an openness inside of me. I know things can change, things can change in a flash. Somebody can have a change of heart, somebody can have a realization about behaviors, somebody can extend an olive branch, all of that stuff. But right now in this present moment, my layer of reality, all the things that it's offering me, all the things, all the ways in which I'm benefiting, I had to give up some stuff for that. And I think this is a lot of why people don't transcend, transform, evolve, choose a higher path, go on that adventure. They don't want to let go, you know? 
I had to let go of some pretty serious stuff, but it's what needed to be done. <laughs> That's the bottom line of it. It's what needed to be done. So the book journey, as I've stated, the first part of the book, it's getting yourself out of the hole. The second part is getting yourself ground level, new foundation laid, building your new structure, using your skills, using the intricate parts of your little you know, code of who it is you are as a unique individual to make a reality, to build a reality, to create a reality that is going to be a higher experience for you. And sorry, I know I'm kind of like a snotty mess here. Um, all I have to say is I love reality transurfing steps one through five. It didn't allow me access to the knowledge that was really necessary in order for me to do what it is that I'm doing. I, I used it to connect to the knowledge, but that knowledge is now being extended through a tale of practical reality transurfing. So I'm going to leave you with this. A lot of people, including me, in the past want change without having to do anything. <laughs> and that's not how it works. You've got to do something. You've got to make moves for yourself. You've got to connect with stuff that is going to allow you to evolve. You've got to put yourself in a layer of reality that you can connect with those things. You've got to get the pendulums off of you that are ripping your face off. <laughs> You've got to you've got to clean up your layer of your world. You've got to build new relationships. You've got to get rid of some. I heard something a while back um, that said something along the lines of, "You are a culmination of your four closest relationships." I mean, man. <laughs> Is that a fucking doozy? I look back on my life and the type of people I was hanging out with, and I'm like, fuck, no wonder I was a piece of shit. I had no, I had no positive influence in my life. Now, I'm surrounded by successful people, entrepreneurs. Sorry, guys, I really got to blow my nose now. Um, people that are living, you know, a, a reality of their choosing people that are doing things differently, people that are not afraid to defy the standards of pendulums and go their own way and buck the trend and do, the, do their thing. This, and this is who I am. So is it time for you to get radical? And I don't mean get radical by sitting and watching YouTube videos on how to get radical. <laughs> Is it time for you to build yourself a workstation, start creating something, start building something, start making advancements in the direction of what it is you really want to do, what you really want to do. For so long, I did not know what I wanted to do. I just want to make money. I just want to have a thriving jewelry business. I just want to go on five-star, you know, fucking vacations and blah, blah, blah. No, that was what the pendulums wanted me to do. When I wiped the fog away from that mirror that morning and I saw my face, I realized what I wanted to do was I wanted to bring reality transurfing to the world and help people to use this knowledge to improve their lives and get them away from level zero and level one and up to some higher versions of reality. And every day since then, and a lot of people think I'm a fucking maniac for it, but every day since then, I have fulfilled this intention. I have stepped into the different roles. I've learned how to talk on camera. I've built programs. I've written a book. I've given seminars. I've all these things and this is where it's this is where it's at for me so are you in a position to get radical stop making excuses 
Stop telling yourself that you don't know what to do. You don't know how to do it and actually figure it out. It's not going to come instantly, but you do have the ability and now the tools to use to actually move into some of those higher versions of reality. This is an option for you. You found yourself here. We're giving you everything you need. Vadim Zeeland gave you the book, right? Free audiobook here on the channel. All the videos, all the courses we offer, the community, it's all here if you want to use it. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to tune to the soul frail? Are you you're, you're, you're the frail of your soul? Are you going to are you going to actually step in to yourself and work it out and do what you need to to affect the image and your mirror? That's where it's at. It's kind of like there's no 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 more time. No more time for excuses. I mean, you can spend some more years thinking about it if you want to, um, but you'll probably come back to this point. There have been a few times where I've actually felt like giving up because this has been challenging for me in a lot of ways. Very very challenging at times, and it's put me in a position where I've had to see things about myself. I've had to learn things that were very very challenging for me to learn. And there were times that I wanted to throw in the towel and give up. Fuck this. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to, you know, do something easier. I'm going to do something that doesn't take as much energy. But you know what? I spent a couple days in that mode thinking, what are you going to do? <laughs> this is it. This is what you've been called to do. This is what you've started and what you want. What are you going to do? You're going to turn your back on it because it's too hard and there's something easier out there. I mean, fuck that, <laughs> you know? So where are you? Who are you? What is it you want to do? Is that or all those questions in line with the, with the frail of your soul in this very moment? And if not, are you ready to start tuning? right? Are you ready to start tuning? So if you want to learn more details and go into the chapter, it's a pretty story heavy chapter. I talk a lot about all this stuff. Again, the links below and I appreciate everyone here supporting me on my own journey. I'm just a trans surfer like everyone else. I just have been doing it a little longer and, and maybe a little more hardcore. <laughs> but I'm here just like everyone else and all of your words of encouragement and um, support. Man, thank you guys all so much. I, I appreciate you believing in me and I want you to know that I believe in you, but most valuably, it's time to start believing in yourself right now. So with that, I will bid you all adieu and I thank you for watching this video and may you tune a little bit more to the frail of your soul today. Bye guys.